Hi, everybody. Scott Kelby here, and welcome to The Lightroom Show. Now, my name is RC. This week, you have a couple of tips on white balance. I got like three little quick nice. tips on white balance that might be really helpful. The first one is for people who shoot tethered. By tethered, I mean your camera is plugged directly into Lightroom. Right. As you take a shot, it comes into Lightroom, and you see it at a large size instead of that tiny size in the back of the screen. Right, right. My recommendation would be, if you're going to do this, make sure that one of the first shots, once you have your lighting set up, is taken with a gray card. Now, you can buy gray cards for 10 bucks at any camera store. If you have either my Lightroom book or my uh, Photoshop book for digital photographers, there's a tear out free one in the back. Uh, here on screen, I'm using a Lastalite one. This is just a little pop-up one, very, very lightweight, pops up from Lastalite. Just have your, at, towards the beginning of the shoot, have your subject hold that and take a picture like you see here. Now, that's step one. Now that's when you are tethered. So what you're gonna do is once that shot comes in, in Lightroom, you're gonna go over here and take the white balance tool, this tool right here, looks like an eyedropper. You're going to click it on there and boom, your white balance is set. But you're not done. There's one more step if you're shooting tethered. Uh, bring up the tethering display, right? The heads up display. And now what you're gonna do is under develop settings, the default is none. You're gonna choose, ready? Same as previous. Now, when you take your next shot, it's going to apply whatever you did to the last shot. Okay. So it'll automatically fix your white balance from that point on. And, and so when you take your next shot, give me a second here to pull it up. Uh, when you get your, when you take the next shot, look, it's, it's automatically corrected. Because you said, do the same thing to the next, all the rest of the images, as you did to, the as one you before did to that one before it. So it automatically fixed it. Now, what if you are not shooting tethered? Mm -hmm. All right, you're gonna do the same exact stuff. Let me open up a different collection. You're gonna do the same stuff. You're gonna have your subject, here's a bunch of images. Have your subject hold that on the first one. Now I'm gonna give you two ways to do this. Way number one is if they held that, you can say, all right, I wanna fix the white balance and then I'm going to copy the white balance. I'm just gonna go to the copy button, say check none, and make sure that of course you leave process version on, and then white balance. Then you're gonna select all the other images and hit paste, and immediately they're all fixed. Now, that's not my preferred method. My preferred method is to actually use auto sync. Let's undo all of that real quick and hit one more undo to there. My preferred way to do this is to actually do this with auto sync turned on. So with auto sync, this little button right here, make sure that's turned on. What that tells Lightroom is whatever I do to the most selected image, the first image I chose, automatically do it to all the rest. Right. So this is the way I would normally work. I don't do that copy and pasting. It just seems like an, an extra step for no reason. Right. So I would start on the first image, click here, done. <laughs> Makes it a one lot click, easier. no copying, no pasting, no making choices, no unchecking stuff, boom, you're done. So that's just a quick one to get us started. Now, viewers sent in uh, images a few weeks ago. Yeah, Marlon Grove had sent in this picture, which I thought it was a wonderful picture and said, well, where would you guys go with this? So right. this would be just our recommendation for mm -hmm. something. So we're looking at the shot and we're like, all right, well, this looks pretty good. Right yeah, now, it's not a bad shot, right? No, it's a pretty good and shot. It's fairly well exposed and yeah. there's nothing bad going on here. Now, the only thing that I would say from this is I'd like to be able to see more of the top of the sky. So for that, you can just come down here, bring down a little bit of the highlights. You'll notice that you start getting a little bit more of that nuance in that sky. You could even come in here and probably drop the exposure just a tiny bit. Yeah. Right. So what I did here is I just clicked on the exposure and then I'm using the up and down arrows to just ever so slightly grab that. Now from there, I'm gonna go ahead and just single click on the shadows and open up the shadows from there. Yeah, it looks better. Now, automatically that shows some stuff. I'd probably add just a smidge of clarity and it pulls out some of that detail. So why are you adding clarity? Just for that mid-tone contrast. I'm looking for a little bit more detail in this one area. I wanna be able to kind of see a little bit of definition within the clouds. Okay. I think that offers a little bit of work there. Now, those blues that we have here, we could work with them individually if we want, inside of the HSL section. So if you click right here under the HSL, you'll notice that you have the option to work with hue, saturation, or luminance. This is that sky trick, isn't it? The sky trick. So you go to luminance, and under the luminance section of it, what I wanna do is I wanna take those blues, and I wanna move those blues down. Ah, oh, that looks better. All right, so from there, we pull those down. Eh, for here, I would probably go over into the whites, and kind of pull the whites up oh, a that's looking little good. bit more. Man, that looks good. Oh, I'm trying to overcook it for that monitor, but I would, I'm gonna leave it at around there. If I wanted to kind of add a little bit more to that, I'd probably just round it out with just a smidge of detail. And now, in this one thing for me, right? this is where we were before, 
this is where we are oh, after. So much more bounce. Would you add anything else to this? I, I would just add one thing. The last thing that I would do, and this is totally optional, this isn't like an official way to do it. Right, right, right. But I think the focus of this image is that round tower, right? Right here. I would go and get the adjustment brush. Okay. Maybe raise the uh, exposure a little bit, maybe a stop. Okay. And so paint we'll... over that building just to bring it out. Because I want your eye. I mean, obviously, it's the largest thing it's going to be, but I would, yeah, a little bit right there. Maybe even, I said a stop, maybe a little, a little more. more. Eh, no more than that. Because you got to make sure you don't spill out the edges because it's that? starting to light the stuff behind. Is this good or too uh, much? Yeah, maybe a little too much. Okay. Just a little bit less. Uh, let's go. And I'm using those up and down arrows to kind of just bring there you. There you go. There you go. There just brings a little bit more. I'm trying to draw your eye there. I, I mean, it's, it's the biggest thing. It's kind of in the... Wow, nice job, RC. It looks good. That would be my last little tweak. But again, that's the great thing about these. Is these there is no official board of this is the right way to do it. You right. have to do it the way it looks good to you, and that would be the only thing that I would add. But that does not necessarily make it right. That's just the thing I would add. All right. So, quick in and out. All yeah. we're doing is using all of the stuff right inside a Lightroom. Right, the now, basic module mostly. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, we'll get a couple more tips and a website for inspiration. We'll be right back. Create a better website at squarespace.com. Start your free trial today. Hey, everybody, we are back. Uh, RC's got a very cool little quick tip for you. Yeah, now, so you're using the spa healing brush on a picture. So I have multiple spots that are here. I want to get rid of all of them at the same time. Just delete every one? No, one by no, one. no, 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 no. Hold on the option key and now just go over to an area, drag out a selection, let it go, poof. All gone. Dude, that is a quick tip. I, when I learned it, I was like, this is amazing. <laughs> that was good. All right. That is Tons of time. You've got one favorite. more. Can you do it? Uh, yeah, I've, I've got one okay. uh, on Lightroom Mobile. Let's do that first. So all right, on all right, Lightroom right. Mobile. Um, so on Lightroom Mobile, when you're working in it, mm -hmm. you can rate it. You can do star picks. Let's take a look. Here's an image. Let's just bring up one of these. So while you're in here, of course, you can drag up to flag. If you want to, you can rate, right? You can do star ratings. But if I want to show somebody and hand them my iPad and say, hey, take a look at these images, I don't want them to be able to accidentally change the rating, mm -hmm. accidentally unpick something or pick something. Well, there's a thing inside Lightroom Mobile called presentation mode. When you turn that on, they can't go to the develop module, they can't re-edit your photos, they can't accidentally make any changes. To get into presentation mode, just click up here in the or tap in the top right corner and present from here. So that means do your presentation, from this module. So if you're just back here in the, you're not, I was in the develop module, but if you're in the grid view, tap and hold, present from here. It's gonna present from wherever you are. You can now hand them your iPad and if they drag up or drag down, nothing happens. Ah. They can't accidentally do anything. So it really gives you a, uh, a way to be able to hand them your, your iPad with security and knowing they're not gonna mess your stuff up. Nice, pretty cool. Pretty All right. cool. Hey, uh, we've just got a couple of minutes left. So um, I do have a photographer I want to talk about in a moment, but I wanted to see if we could just squeeze in. We're still well <laughs> under our time limit. Squeeze in another viewer image. This one is from uh, Andrew Paulson. And it's a nice bridal shot. Everything looks pretty good here. Um, there's some things that we can do real quickly to help this. Of course, there's a window on the right side of the room, which means everybody on the left side of the room is not lit as brightly. She would be the most brightly lit here. The dress is very brightly lit and it gets darker and darker. To the... One way we correct that really quickly is to go in here with the gradient filter tool and just increase the exposure drag and it balances out the room real quickly. Right. Just kind of go over here and balance it out. Uh, the next thing that I would do, and again, that, that might be a little too bright, but you kind of want the room to have an overall balance. Look, there's before and after. See how it brightens that side of the room? Right. Overall balances it. I think generally that the highlights are pretty bright in this image. Let's go look at those. Um, took a look, let's, if we click on there, yeah. Part of her wedding dress is clipping. That's an absolute no-no. You're not gonna be able to fix the window from clipping, that's the sun coming, but right. you should not be clipping her wedding dress. So let's go to the uh, regular basic panel, take the highlights back just a little bit, boom, they're gone. 
Nice. Now you have detail in the highlights, you're not going to lose anything. The other thing that I would do is some of their faces are a little dark, just based on the light is on one far side. I would go in with the adjustment brush, take a little hit, make sure you hit the new button so you're not adjusting what you've already done. And let's go in here and just put a little more light in the bridesmaid's faces. In the bride's face, just a little more light over here. Little light on the far sides of their faces, so it's not so. Those are okay. She needs definitely needs some light right in here. All right, and then again, the great thing about Lightroom is you can go and tweak it after the fact. But we can kind of get that more. I tell you what draws my eye more than anything is this up here. Lightroom isn't going to be the most elegant choice to get rid of that, but right. if you take the spot healing brush and let's just kind of go right up here and see what we can do, we can at least minimize it a bit. Let's go ahead and here and. Now, you see how far it, off, it is off? Let's pull this over until we can get kind of a closer match. Let's see what we can get. Something like about right. That's not terrible. That's not terrible. Now, you can still tweak it a little. Go over here to the feather control and see what's the sweet spot at which all the way up. Oh, you, you could get away with that, I think, right there. That's better so. than that bright thing. If you go down with the feather, you can, ooh. That's not bad. I would just leave it right there. That's way better <laughs> than, than drawing your eyes up there. The other thing you might do is to finish it off by darkening all the edges all the way around the image by going to the effects and just maybe darkening the edges a little bit. I don't want to darken it enough to where you see, oh, he put a vignette on it. That would be like way in like that's bad. I just want to put a little bit in there just to kind of kick it off so you're not drawn over to the side. And I, I think, and here, so here's the full before and after from there to there. That's and it's, it's not a like a, woo, that's night and day, but I think it's better because the, the lighting is balanced, you've gotten rid of that big flare, you've gotten rid of the clipping in the bride's dress, their, their faces are easy to see, so it's not a massive overhaul, it's a little tiny tweak. But it's a good one. Now you want to see some really great stuff? <laughs> Let me show you. Nothing against it. I think the photographer had a nice job there, but this the woman we're going to uh, feature here is our feature photographer, em Emily Poehler. Oh my gosh, Ooh. she is awesome. Let me get over to her website here. Uh, here's Emily Poehler for epicness, right? So uh, I, I've been following her for a while. She's just got some amazing images. Uh, this is her land. She has uh, like different categories, and this is is land. Uh, her adventure stuff, I think, is is wonderful, and her travel stuff is just great too. It's just she's. She's been around and she's a good photographer and she's just got some, and a oh, lot of these are great. I think in Burma or Myanmar um, and she's got some really, really, I love that image. I think that's just so interesting and his gesture and, and just really, Wonderful really, work. yeah, just really, really cool stuff. If you get a chance, look at the light there and stuff. Go check that out, Emily Poehler, P-O-L-A-R dot com. So, now, if you want to watch more of this kind of stuff, leave us a comment. Remember, this is your show. We want to be able to answer your questions. Go over to the Lightroom Killer Tips website. Make sure that you take a look at the articles that are there. And on show day, when you see the show show up in the comments, tell us what you want to see. That's as simple as that. Yeah, hey, we also want to invite you to check out uh, where we do all of our training all the time is over at kelby1.com. It's an online a subscription service for That's people right. who want to learn Lightroom all year long. That's right. And we do a ton of training along with a, lo a lot of the other uh, most well-known names in Lightroom. Mm -hmm. Just go check it out. Watch the little video on the front page there. If you go to Kelby One, go see where it says watch video. Watch that video. It explains it all and uh, hope you'll get to check us out online. So thanks very much for watching you guys. Yeah. My name is RC. I'm Scott. We'll see you next time. Take care.